Hi, and welcome to the second video in the series uh, where we'll be looking at how to use the uh, program OpenCPN um, to visualize and record AIS data. Uh, right, if you've not uh, viewed the first video in this series, uh, which explains how to download, install, uh, and uh, basically connect um, OpenCPN and your, your laptop or tablet to your uh, uh, Vespa Marine XB8000 AIS uh, transponder, I'd recommend that you do watch that um, as it'll explain a lot of the preceding steps to what you'll see today. Uh, before we begin, um, just a, a couple of disclaimers. Uh, firstly, OpenCPN should not be used for navigation purposes. Um, if you are uh, seeking to use it for navigation purposes, you should not. You should use uh, paper charts and uh, other pieces of software and equipment that have been rated for navigational use. Uh, OpenCPN is basically um, only to be used for uh, recording and visualizing AIS data. Uh, also, um, we uh, do not. Uh, uh, we don't uh, endorse any of the products or software um, that we uh, are using in this video um, and uh, basically if you choose to follow um, the guidance in the videos and the associated manual um, you acknowledge that you do so at your own risk. Um, as I just mentioned there, there is a, a manual available um, created a PDF document which is available to uh, be downloaded from the MASTS website at www.masts uh, which is spelled M-A-S-T-S uh, .ac.uk um, but also you can uh, visit the uh, OpenCPN homepage and use their um, uh, provided uh, user manual also. Uh, right, um, so uh, to begin um, I'll explain uh, firstly how to import your electronic charts uh, into uh, OpenCPN. Uh, at the moment you can see the, the basic background uh, map on there which is uh, very limited use uh, in that it has no geographical um, locations on it. Um, with regard to importing e-charts, um, OpenCPN works best with um, uh, what are called raster charts or CAP files. Um, for further information on what um, file formats uh, OpenCPN is compatible with, uh, I'd recommend um, you go to the uh, official OpenCPN um, uh, webpage, which uh, take you there now you can see uh, about CPN if you click on the OpenCPN user manual um, basic features and you'll see under here all about charts and you'll see the second from bottom option here is chart formats that explains to you what uh, chart formats are compatible with OpenCPN uh, so if we turn back to OpenCPN there uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, we will be using um, a chart stick purchased from uh, visitmyharbor.com. Um, I mean, we, we're using this simply for um, efficiency and ease of use as um, on a single uh, encrypted uh, USB drive, um, you can obtain all of the UK and Ireland um, uh, Mercator and multi charts um, for a one off purchase. Um, to uh, basically obtain this stick, if you simply search for visit my harbour, there we are. Um, it's the first result that comes up. Click on that, and if you scroll down the page, you'll see on the right here charts for OpenCPN. Click on that, and it takes you through to a page um, with information on um, what charts are available and the option to purchase these. Uh, right, uh, just to explain as well, the the chart stick is a, an encrypted USB drive. Um, you can use it on as many machines as you like, but essentially you cannot copy the charts from the stick, um, uh, which means to use the charts in uh, OpenCPN on a given machine, you need to ensure that the stick um, is plugged into that machine. Right, so to begin, um, I'll show you how to import the chart. So insert the USB stick into a USB port, and um, uh, you should see this autoplay dialog box appear. Um, if you don't, then you will need to actually go into the, the chart stick through Windows uh, Explorer and click on the Run Me exec application in, uh, within that uh, uh, folder. Uh, but here we simply click on the Run Me application. Um, you'll see there's a dialog box comes up. We want to trust the publisher. And you'll see this loading, please wait, um, message box. Uh, once that's completed, 
uh, end user license agreement window will appear. We click on I agree and we're now informed that the chart stick is now unlocked. Uh, which now means we have access to the charts on the stick. Um, so to actually import them into OpenCPN um, we need to go up here to the, the menu tabs and um, the spanner icon, the options icon, which uh, if you've watched the first video you'll be familiar with. Um, and we want to go into charts and you'll see there's uh, this directories and chart files directories and we'd like to add a directory so we click on add a directory and this dialog box opens up and you'll see down here is the CD drive uh, chart stick it's listed as a CD drive um, simply to prevent uh, accidental deletion of the contents so you click on that and one of the folders within is UK Ireland Mercator charts so we want to click on that we click OK and we'll see now that that's appeared under directories Again, if you have your own electronic chart files that you want to use, um, exactly the same process. Um, click on Add Directory, go to the folder location, uh, select that folder, and then click um, Apply. So we apply, and you'll see now that there's a, a, a taskbar appeared, a progress bar, um, that's showing the, the files being uh, imported. So we'll just need to, to wait for uh, a few seconds. Uh, the speed at which uh, the files import will depend upon the, the speed of uh, your, lap, uh, your laptop or tablet. So, as you can see, the background has now changed slightly. So, we'll need to click OK. Uh, we'll be presented with another uh, progress bar. Uh, hasn't quite finished um, rendering the chart, so we'll just wait for that. done. Um, you'll see that the, the, the background is a bit blurry and indistinct. Um, I'll just run through a couple of these toggles. You'll see here the zoom in and zoom out, which simply zooms in and zooms out on the, the current display. But then next to that we have the um, shift to larger scale chart and shift to smaller scale chart. So what we want to do is shift out, oh, I'll shift in. And if we shift out it obviously goes to the, the smaller scale there. You'll see all these um, red um, squares. Basically these represent the boundaries of, of each um, chart file. Uh, so obviously the smaller ones are more detailed, the larger ones are less detailed. So we want to zoom back in, so zoom in quite tightly, and you can see that that's quite a detailed file showing now several uh, AIS targets. If I just scroll up, uh, obviously we're, we're not on a vessel, we're on land. This red icon here um, displays the location of the AIS unit, which would essentially be the location of your vessel. Uh, one of the options here, you'll see Auto Follow. Um, if you click that, um, the program automatically centers your location and keeps that uh, your location central uh, on the display. Um, also, just before that, you'll see the Create Route option. We don't have time to, to, to go into a, a lot of these more in-depth features in this video, but um, their use is explained in the uh, the chart. Uh, so we'll move back down to the fourth here, where these times are displayed. Um, again, the Options tab you're familiar with. Again, the manual goes into much more detail um, as to the various options displayed under them. Um, a useful one under connections is if you're not certain whether your unit is receiving AIS data, um, you can actually click on that and you'll see under this debug window um, the NMEA data stream coming in. Uh, again, connection information, which if you've uh, watched the first video you'll be familiar with. Charts we've largely covered. Um, there's various display options. You'll see this navigation mode, north up, course up. Basically north up means that the, the top of the display um, is kept facing true north. Um, you can also amend this quite easily without going into options by using this um, icon box up here in the, the far right, top right. Um, you'll see the blue um, arrow there. That's basically when it's pointed to true north. If you click on uh, course up or click on that icon, actually we'll, we'll go out, if you click on that icon, it basically then uses your heading um, as uh, the top of to, to orientate the top of the display. Next to that, you'll um, see 
these um, green bars. These are um, displaying your GPS connection and, and strength. If there's no GPS connection, then there's simply a, a red circle displayed here. Uh, again, there's a there's a, a lot of options under uh, ships. Um, again, uh, we simply don't have time to go into all these, but they are described within the the user manual, which uh, we recommend that you review. Plugins, I'll, I'll uh, cover a little bit later. Uh, again, with these um, up here, you have the option to hide AAS targets. We'll cover uh, that's covered in the manual. Um, you can show currents, show tides if that data is available. Um, you can print out the current display. Uh, you also got you can uh, add um, route. You can basically manage your routes and marks that you've saved within AAS. Again, that's covered in the manual. Um, you can enable tracking of, of specific ve of yourself and specific vessels. Um, you can also do this under if you click on a, a given AAS target. Um, you can uh, show the target's predicted course. That will bring it in the CA, and you can also show the target track, which if the vessel's moving, it will display its its uh, its track. Um, again, you can any target you can display more detailed information on it by clicking on the uh, target query tab and this displays um, various um, positional speed course um, MMSI number class name uh, and occasionally a description of the vessel um, it also allows you to record the vessel track Right, uh, moving on, um, we can change the colour scheme. This is of relatively limited use as it simply makes the colour scheme darker. Um, and you uh, can also show basic information about the programme. There's also here at the end a uh, drop man overboard marker, um, which is fairly self explanatory. Um, these three icons here are actually shouldn't no wouldn't be won't be visible um, uh, on your install. They're, they're under plugins. Um, so if I disable these and apply, you'll see that this this is basically the display you'll be greeted with. Um, so now I'll actually uh, go in and describe um, the plugins. Um, one plugin in particular um, is the Voyage Data Recorder, which allows you to record and display um, AIS data, both um, for your vessel and for um, surrounding vessels. Basically, any any vessel that's being picked up on your AIS uh, unit. Um, its data uh, will be recorded. Um, however, these don't come as standard under the OpenCPN program. They uh, need to be installed as plugins. So, if we go to the options menu under plugins, you'll see that there are uh, some pre-existing options. Um, the VDR, uh, the Voyage Data Recorder, doesn't come installed as standard. Um, I'll explain to you how you. Um, download and install that uh, shortly. However, dashboard and grip plugins do come in um, uh, installed under the uh, OpenCPN version 4. Dashboard, um, we click on that and enable, click apply and OK, and you'll see now that this there's a new tab appeared up here in the menu, dashboard. If we click on that, uh, it basically brings up a, another dialog box which shows your lat and long, um, your compass, and uh, your GPS status, basically how many satellites you're connected to and the strength of that. If we go back under options, plugins, there's uh, another one here, Grip. Uh, this is basically a, a weather and wave um, plugin. Uh, again, um, we don't have time to go into how this um, works and to use the features on this, but this is uh, outlined in detail in the uh, manual that's available from um, MASTS, the MASTS website. Uh, the next one we'll look at is the, uh, probably the most important, the Voyage uh, Data Recorder. Uh, but I'll explain first how you find that and download and install it. So to download and install, um, you need to go to the OpenCPN official uh, website. And you'll see up here in the main menu, uh, the Downloads tab, under which there's uh, plugins as the first option. So we click on that. And there's basically a page listing all the available plugins for OpenCPN 4.0. Um, there's quite a few of these. Some are quite useful, some not so much. Um, but we're only interested in the Voyage Data Recorder at the moment. So if you scroll down, it's uh, quite near the bottom. 
and there we are, the VDR or Voyage Data Recorder. Um, it's available for uh, various operating systems, Mac, Linux, Windows. We want Windows, so we click on Setup Package there, and uh, yes, we want to run. So uh, yes, we want to allow the publisher access, and you'll see now it enters the Setup um, uh, dialog box. We click Next. We agree to the license agreement. We want to install it in the OpenCPN folder location. Um, now, because I already have this particular plugin uh, installed in OpenCPN, it won't let me continue with the setup. Um, however, in your case, um, you would be able to then follow all, all the steps in setup, which basically involves clicking next and then finally um, finish uh, install. So that's basically how you find and install the Voyage Data Recorder plugin. So we'll return to OpenCPN. Once, once you've done that, you need to go to Options. And as for the other plugins, you need to select the plugin in particular and you need to enable it. So we click on Enable and then we click Apply and OK. And you'll notice now that um, we now have two additional tabs on the menu available, these orange tabs here. One for Record, one for Play. Uh, very simple operation. Um, whenever you want to record um, your AIS track and your surround and the surrounding vessels AIS tracks, you simply click on record, and it opens this choose a file dialog box, um, in which basically you name your file. So we'll call ours August two there. But the key important step is you must add a uh, .txt to the end of the file name. Uh, that specifies it's to be saved as a text file. So once you've done that, you click Save. Uh, and basically once you've done that, OpenCPN uh, begins recording the AIS data uh, on your display. Uh, once you've finished recording uh, AIS data, um, typically we, you, know, you might want to click Record as you leave Harbour, and then as you're re-entering Harbour, you want to stop recording. So you'd simply go up. You'll see when recording is active, the, the tab is slightly darker. Uh, to stop recording, you simply click the tab again and that stops recording. Um, to play um, the AIS uh, data record you click the play tab and again you open a choose a file dialog box you go to the location of your um, records uh, whatever folder you've nominated you'll see in here we've got org1 and org2 um, I'll select org1 because um, this is a previous record so the display is different so you select that um, you'll see under the the contents display it's showing the NME a uh, data feed that's been recorded and we just click open and what you'll see now is there we are another vessel's appeared and it's it's this VDR replay box um, has appeared and it's showing um, what was recorded uh, in the uh, org1 file uh, progress bar again it's fairly self-explanatory shows the progress uh, uh, of the recording as it plays, and then you can increase and decrease the speed of the uh, the, the play, uh, the record play, um, to whatever speed you like. Um, to stop uh, playing um, the record, you simply go up to the tab. You'll see it's it's darkened because it's playing. You click it again, and that that stops the replay. Um, you can actually play uh, a record uh, whilst it's being recorded if you if you wish to look at your the previous activity that day, um, you can do that. Um, so basically that, that brings us to the end of this video where we've looked at uh, basically how to import um, eMaps into OpenCPN and how to undertake some of the basic functions, uh, particularly how to um, visualize and record um, AIS data. Uh, again, um, there's far more detail available on all of the, the options within OpenCPN um, using our manual which is available from the MASTS website at www.masts.ac.uk uh, um, or alternatively you can review the um, official OpenCPN manual on the OpenCPN uh, website. Uh, again, um, OpenCPN should not be used for navigation purposes and uh, by making providing these guides uh, we're not endorsing um, any of the software or products mentioned in the videos and um, Basically, if you choose to follow any of the information in these guides, um, you acknowledge that you do so at your own risk. Uh, again, thank you for your time, and uh, I hope you find uh, these videos and the manual uh, useful.